Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for February 7th, 2020. What a week we have had. It's been a wild ride. So how about we buckle up and get ready for the Friday edition of the morning market prep video. Let's take a look at what we have going on here. Obviously, last week, we we ended our week with a 600-point fall in the Dow. Um, pretty dramatic fall, lots of nervousness coming into the market, concerns about uh, virus issues and things like that really sent the market reeling. Now what's interesting is we've decided that that doesn't really matter and so we have left great big gaps behind huge huge price gaps behind as we have moved up in this market now that always leaves a little bit of concern when when you see a a pattern that is uh, a down move like this and an absolutely almost straight up parabolic move that leaves me the concern what happens when the bears decide to come back into play will they come back into play i don't know but if they do come back into play where are we going to find price support and that could create some significant volatility um, possibly today and even into next week that we'll have to be thinking about because i really don't see much of any price support until we come all the way back down here which would be a pretty substantial decline in the dow now we could catch a little tiny bit of support right through there if we can pull back and hold into there so that's certainly a possibility but we have these big open holes behind that may uh, may get filled and we'll have to watch closely on that if we start to see some profit taking and some pullback in the market right now the bulls um certainly staying in control new record highs yesterday set in the diamonds the spies in the queue and everything looks to be copacetic now this morning we're getting a little bit of a gap down right now dow futures are pointing to about a hundred point decline this morning morning and that's been lifting up actually as the morning goes on um, I should rephrase this because right now we're only down 87 points so those bulls are not going to give up easily on this rally and we should understand that pretty clearly that they're not going to give up easily so um, what do we do with with a turn down like this well I got to tell you, with with the the relentless nature of the bulls here recently, I would not be at all surprised to see a gap down get fully recovered today uh, by the bulls. So we could gap down and rally all the way back up, and may even make new highs before um, you know morning session is complete. But then I kind of wonder if we might get some profit taking coming in and, and actually a fairly strong swing of profit taking that could come in before the end of the day heading into the weekend. Now, I don't, this is all speculation and I don't know if we're going to get that or not. But one thing I know for sure is I don't expect those bulls to give up easily. If the bears to start, start coming back in and start pushing down, if we start opening up and falling in into some of these gaps we could see some pretty volatile moves down as well so just keep that in uh, you know in your mind and, and maybe think about that carefully as you're considering your current positions you know one of the things that's real easy to do in a market like this is to uh, you're looking at your portfolio, you're seeing these nice profits and um, hey we all just want more right and we end up letting greed step in and get in the way of us um, taking some of those profits and reducing some of that risk. Heading into the weekend and after a virtually parabolic rally back up, 
that might not be a bad idea to be taking some profits, closing some trades, reducing some risk in this market. Now, do what you think is right for you. I'm just bringing that up as an idea that we could certainly see anything over the weekend create that uncertainty that moves us back lower. You know, as a matter of fact, we've done a really good job of ignoring everything on the virus um, outbreak this week. But let's keep in mind, this thing is continuing to expand. We, um, last night, um, they reported now over 31,000 people. We can continue to jump up three or 4,000 people a day. Um, in that virus. It is not slowing down. And we have um, China businesses are set to reopen um, on Monday, get back to business. But it makes me question if with the, with the virus continuing to expand over there, if we may hear from the Chinese government to um, extend those business closures. And even if they don't extend those business closures, you have to imagine there's gonna be a lot of folks who just say, nope, I'm not going out. I'm not gonna reopen my business uh, because I don't wanna bring this contagion home. So um, it's gonna be an interesting situation and how that continues to affect over there is hard to know, but um, just remember those uncertainties can pop up over the weekend that can really create some issues. So everything started uh, down a little bit this morning when China um, ended up delaying their trade data. I'm guessing it has something to do with all of the activity over there and the issues going on, but um, they delayed their trade data last night that that put asian markets into kind of a mixed mode um last night and european markets this morning are um all looking slightly lower this morning so um just a little bit of pullback may be coming in this market um, and probably not a surprise after such a big rally let's take a look at the spy spy um, another record high here in the SPY. And once again, a very straight up move here in this market. You know, at some point in time, you, you go up that fast, you shoot up that fast, some kind of rest or pullback is due eventually. So we shouldn't be surprised if that occurs at any time. And we'll wanna be thinking about those uh, potential profits that we can capture in that move. Of course, breaking through that resistance high, we have that possibility that if we do pull back, we just pull back and bounce right off of that level. But I have to assume that we're going to get more of a pullback after such a steep rally. And if we drop into some of these gaps, just expect some volatility to be created if that does occur. Not that it will occur, but if that does occur, we'll want to watch that pretty closely. Let's take a look at the Qs. Qs um, has been the leader in this market, just relentless. We have had um, the big companies, Microsoft, uh, uh, Amazon, those kind of companies really lifting um, the entire market up. And as you can see, finishing at um, record highs yesterday, continuing to uh, record high close, I should say, um, continuing to show tremendous bullishness um, in um, the tech sector. As you can see, we're getting a slight gap down here this morning. Nothing major here um, at the moment, but a slight gap down in the NASDAQ this morning. So once again, as we start to pull back, this one I think has the better opportunity to pull back into a price support because that's a fairly substantial pullback here and hold some price support where the diamonds and the spy have some big open holes below that could be a problem. Um, obviously, if we were to pull back and drop into this gap, that could get pretty serious here, but um, I wouldn't be... Um, suggesting that is possible yet uh, we don't see that kind of bearishness coming into the market at least for now let's take a look at um, iwm iwm had um, 
a good day yesterday, continuing to push up, but as you can see by the end of the day, they started to turn around at this price resistance level. Just didn't quite feel the love that the rest of the indexes uh, seem to have. Uh, turned around leaving a bit of a dark cloud cover. And now this morning, IWM is gapping a bit lower here um, into that move. So a pullback into this support area right in here would not be a big surprise. Um, at all. We'll want to watch that though if that happens to fail that could be a problem with a lower high in IWM. So keep that in mind. Let's take a look at the VIX. I think what's interesting is with the rampant bullishness that we've had here is that the VIX has not been really giving up all of that fear. So, for example, um, we we went just on the in, in the virus issues. We went from uh, down in here on those virus concerns all the way up here. But notice we've gone only about half of that way back down, even with this meteoric rise that we've seen in the market. So a little bit of concern here for me that we haven't had a corresponding response in the fear on, on VIX. So keep an eye on that. If we were to find some support in here, maybe off of this downtrend, um, off of these highs right in here in the chart, find some support, a little fear comes back in here then um, we hold that higher low and fear could really start to spike. So kind of keep that in mind. Don't expect that to occur, but if it does, we want to be, uh, we want to keep a close eye on that. Um, one thing uh, this morning with the gap down that we're um, setting up for right now in the market, that we could see that fear creeping back up here above this level right in here. And that would certainly be um, just a little bit of concern if we break back above that resistance that we and that we just finally cracked back down below this week so watch that closely if that were to occur let's take a look at t2122 t2122 is the four week new high new low ratio kind of interesting yesterday that even though we broke out to new record highs yesterday t2122 showed us that maybe the breadth of the market was not as strong as it was being um, well as it appeared Appeared. So we went from a completely oversold condition to a overbought condition in just um, a real, you know, three days, uh, essentially, we um, recovered completely. But as you can see yesterday, even though the market was going higher, notice that T2122 was pulling back. What that tells me is that we were being pushed up by very specific stocks the big the big tech uh, not big tech but the big market cap stocks that were pushing up and providing us that that upside move in the indexes but we weren't seeing um, that um, spread over a lot of stocks and if you were looking at stocks yesterday you may have found that to be difficult to find any really good signals yesterday in stocks because so many were uh, kind of sliding sideways or pulling back um, overall so kind of keep that in mind we we had a little bit of indication that the bulls may be wearing out even though they continue to push in really specific select areas yesterday to keep that market running higher so we'll want to watch that carefully. Let's take a look at um, our economic calendar for today. And our economic calendar does have a few things um, that we want to pay attention to. Really, the thing, uh, first thing is going to be before the bell here this morning, we have that employment situation number. Now, right now, consensus estimates are it's going to come in probably in line. I don't think anyone is expecting that to be any kind of a major surprise um, that um, jobs are going to remain strong. Our, our economy... Our, our jobs numbers um, have just been remarkably, and as a matter of fact, historically strong. Um, so I don't expect a whole lot of price action movement around that, but the market always is pensive ahead of um, a number like that. So let's kind of keep that in mind. The rest of the day, not much going on here on that economic calendar to really move us around. 
So at that point, we will focus back on news and earnings events. And earnings events today, we have a little bit of a break. We only just have over 40 companies reporting earnings today. So nothing that is... Um, you know, just it's just not one of those big days. But we do have um, ABBV reporting today. Looks like ABBV is uh, gapping just a little bit higher on its report this morning. Um, AVTR is um, reporting today. Doesn't look like we've got a report. Bid ask spread is really wide. There's market makers trying to protect themselves there with that bid ask spread as they're waiting for that report to come out. Um, FE, FE reporting today. There's another really wide bid S spread waiting for that report to come out. Um, HMC, another stock reporting today. It looks like it might be moving lower this morning. And notice none of these stocks are the kind of stocks that would be the ones that you would think um, uh, big market moving uh, type stocks. Um, MSG is another uh, one reporting and another really wide bid ask spread. And uh, by the way, if uh, this if you've not seen me use these charts before, this is a TC2000 platform. It's a platform that I highly recommend, guys. It's it's just a great platform uh, for charting. And if you look right here. Um, this is telling me what the bid ask spread is currently in the market. So um, that's how I can look at a pre market or after market and see where the bid ask is um, right on the chart. Helps, um, helps an awful lot when you're looking um, around pre market and, and after market, looking at those earnings reports and things like that. Now, yesterday we had Uber. After the bell, Uber reported they reported a loss, but it was. Um, I think less than expected. So the stock is gapping up this morning um, on that news and they expect to re get to profitability by maybe by next quarter. And that will be kind of nice if that can actually occur. So keep an eye on that. That's looking good this morning. So with that, let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, if you guys would do me a favor, if you click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that, thumb, um, that uh, bell icon when it pops up so you can be notified every time I post one of these videos. These videos are all about helping uh, traders prepare for the day to try and remove some of the emotion that you might be feeling in the morning, that rush of energy, that hype and drama that you pick up in the financial news, and just really look at the technicals of the chart and try to determine how you want to approach the market for the day. I can't tell you that my approach for the day is going to be the right approach for the day for you. But if you uh, follow along with these videos, you can help, you can formulate that idea. Now I can tell you that over the last 15 years as a full-time trader, this kind of thing has helped me a ton. I tend to, um, well, years ago, I tended to react emotionally to the market, get all caught up in the fear of missing out, or I would chase, rushing, all of those kind of things. This preparation work made the difference for me in my trading, helping me focus um, on the right things and be prepared for the day. If you guys find that useful, if you could please do me a favor also and click that thumbs up button and leave a brief comment. So we can continue to grow this channel, reach out to more folks, helping more folks with their trading setup for the day. Thank you, everyone. You guys are awesome. I truly appreciate it. So with that, let's take a look at some stocks that are setting up or could be setting up. Um, yesterday, I mentioned a bearish stock. Um, Starbucks as a failure pattern and that certainly did follow through to the downside now with this gap down this morning it looks like it could extend that little sell off um, in Starbucks so let's keep an eye on that if we take a look at this with some drawings on here you can see that we dropped down through this price support um, yesterday that brought in those sellers and now pushing lower we could actually drop right into this little price support right in here um, before um, this sell-off, um, you know, 
finds a little resting point, um, we'll have to wait and see. But not looking too good right now in Starbucks. Long chart charts, there's some good long charts out there to be keeping an eye on. One of them might be AMD. Now, AMD has held up really, really well. And if you take a look and we pull this chart all the way back, we go back here. Notice that AMD has broken out of even the 1999 tech bubble highs. And if we zoom back up here, you can see we've had a nice little pullback that held in this area of support. We bounced around in here with that volatility, but we're holding in this area of support, hanging out. So we've got this little wedge pattern um, forming, this little triangle pattern. If that can pop out of there and hold, AMD may have some more upside potential. So keep an eye on that. AMD has held up really, really well in, um, in this chart and looking pretty good. Good. A chart that we had mentioned um, sometime before, and actually RWO made some, some, some money on this. If you take a look at OSTK, OSTK, this is what we call a rounded bottom breakout pattern. That's where our 50 day moving average is well below our 200 day moving average. And our short term averages cross up. We start to build this base in here on the stock. Notice that our 50 day moving average has started to turn the corner. We flatten out and we're starting to turn the corner. Buyers may be stepping up in here. So in that round of bottom breakout, we're just looking for this stock to rally back to somewhere um, um, kind of the mean, a reversion to the mean. And that would be up around that 200 day moving average. Keep in mind, this stock has some resistance levels to deal with on the way up. So if we move up into this resistance area, we may find a pause. If we move through that, move on up into this resistance resistance area, we may find that pause. So it's not a straight up move, but there can be really good money in here. And particularly as an option trader, really good money can be made um, in those quick moves in between those levels. So watch that close. OSTK looking very, very good um, in that round of bottom breakout pattern. As you guys know, I've been mentioning Twitter um, possibly setting up, and of course, earnings really messed this up. Um, you had to gamble around earnings to take advantage of this. Now we've rallied up and we're, we tagged this resistance level in the chart, pulled back there by the end of the day. So what we're going to want to do here is keep an eye on Twitter. Any consolidation in here that pops up could be an opportunity. A pullback that holds above the low of this candle that holds above there could give us an opportunity for a trade. So we've kicked this kicked this uh, stock in the in the next direction here, kicked it to the upside. And if we can deal with this um, area right in here of resistance well, then there may be some upside potential. So um, Twitter might be something you want to put on a list. Um, and last but not least, uh, take a look at this CRWD. CRWD holding up very nicely in here. Uh, it's going to report um, first week or so of, of uh, next month. So we'll want to keep an eye on that. But watch this in here. Um, nice little potential setup. So I'm running this video long this morning. I apologize. I want to wish everyone a fantastic day. And more importantly, I want to wish you an awesome, awesome weekend. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning. Thank you very much, everyone.